Good morning, friends. How are y'all doing? Watching this ACB EQ break with no follow through. That is our problem when we have resistance so close by. We break one resistance, but it had to break 618. And it just double topped at 617 on the five minutes. Still watching ACB. I won't take this trade because I'm live, but uh, I think it's a fairly nice setup. My preferred entry would have been down here had I played it around 607, 608 and bottom fish the bottom of this EQ. So watching that, oil is falling. So I will uh, get started in about a minute. All my regulars are here, my friends. Good to see y'all. CGC is a double top they're calling out in the room. Watch SPY here with this oil pullback. We've had some positive correlation with oil, so we need SPY to disconnect if you're a SPY bull so it can see some continuation. And it did not clear the high of day, which is at 29742. Okay. ABT and Nugget, let me add those to the room, to the thread. Okay, Nugget, gotcha. All right, let's get started. All right, good morning. So SPY is having a nice reversal off some well-timed news. As you can see, we are rejecting right now at the 26 EMA on the 15 minute. We did not clear the high of day. We missed it by 14 cents and then we pulled back. Doesn't mean the bulls are done yet. We could have a possible five minute bull flag watching this extreme oil pullback and bounce right now. That was a pullback on higher bear volume. Let me show you what I'm watching on oil. This is one of my uh, top trades for the winter. I'll just go ahead and clear my chart, but I'm watching this. We got a higher high, a uh, lower low, wait, higher low, excuse me, lower high, higher low, lower high, higher low, and we're tightening up and we have a $10 range now. So this low of 50.52 and this high of 60.94. Uh, I am currently in an oil short and my plan is to swing at least half of it and lock in half gains. It's pulling back nicely now. And I am actually, I am bullish oil for the fall. I hope that we break this bullish, but I will trade whatever the chart gives me. But right now we're having an extreme pullback from this uh, rejection up here on oil. All right. Thank you for going my way. So just watch out for any SPY negative correlation. So we got SPY pulling back a little bit more now as well. So your next support on oil is 57.13. 57.13, excuse me, I am so sorry. I'm giving you futures numbers. I'm not supposed to do that. I'm supposed to give you spot price. My bad. Okay, so your next support on oil is 57.11. Okay, a lot of you are interested in Nat Gas USD. Let's look at Nat Gas. Nat Gas has been pulling back from this extreme run right now. All healthy consolidation. It would have to lose 250, 250 on the hourly to lose this uptrend. So right now it's all healthy. This is a little bit more elevated vo bear volume than the bulls would like to see. So uh, just just watching that. Uh, so excuse these prices over here. The, this is futures. Uh, this looks news related. I don't know if anyone, anyone see any oil news? This is interesting. Okay. So Nat gas, your support on the five minute 257 and 256, your resistance 259 and then 260 Bitcoin having a little pop. I apologize. I'm not current on this chart. So it'll just take me a little bit to get acclimated. Right now on the four hour, we got a pretty extreme pullback on the four hour. 10,118 is your support. Then after that, 10,000 psychological. Your resistance, 10,557 and then 10,599. Let's look on the hourly. Hourly, we are in a downtrend. We need to see a 15 minute trend change in order for us to feel a little bit more confident that our low is in on the hourly. Uh, and then let's look at XLF. XLF looks like a bear flag 
on the 30 minute. The bulls are hoping that that's enough bounce that maybe they can get a higher low. That's a pretty good bounce. They may be able to get a higher low relative to 27.70 on the day. So watching XLF, okay, and QQQ. QQQ made a, did it make a hot new high of day? Nope, it did not. 190.26 over here is our high of day and we just topped out on that wick at 190.09, kind of like SPY did. So uh, let's just use the body of the candles, our zone of resistance here and our zone of support just for some clarity. So the body of that candle did not clear 189.82. So that will give you the clarity that you need so you don't get noise with these news wicks. So these news wicks up and down are just noise. Stick with the body of the candle. That gives you the meat of the move. All right, and we are now going to look at CGC, and then I'll get to Mark's tickers that I, I can't believe I messed up, messed up the thread, but y'all knew what I meant. Y'all meant what I knew. Okay, so CGC could be a bull flag on the 30 minute. So what the bulls need to do is break the high of day in short order right here. They need to break 2748 in, in order to confirm this bull flag. And then you got support at $27. We got decreasing bear volume, but we also have decreasing bull volume. That's not good. We're in the lunchtime lull. We expect that, but we need really need some volume for this to get some continuation. And we need a close at the high of the day in order for the bulls to get some type of momentum. All right, let's go to Mark's tickers. Let me make sure I gave you the support levels. On five minute, $27 with hardly any follow through, which makes us zoom out and look for a bull flag, but we're not getting the follow through now. We need to break the high of day, 27.48 on volume for the bulls to feel a little bit more comfortable with this move. Resistance in the short term is 27.43, 27.48. And then after that, I'm gonna zoom out to the hourly. Then we have nothing till 28.45. So again, break that high of day. Right now we're in an hourly double top. Break the high of day. Okay, AWK, that awesome utility stock that's been a big old bull and it is a big old bear now. So SPY starts going up. AWK starts pulling back because the dividend is 50 cents. It is a hedge because it has this dividend. So this chart's getting real interesting. I think Mark brought this to, uh, yeah, he did. He brought it to BYOC, and I believe he was showing us this algo trend line. I may have gotten it wrong, but the algo trend line at the top, it and by algo trend line, uh, what we're saying is it's an anticipatory uh, line where you have two points, and then you wait for that third point to connect and confirm the trend line. So it's an anticipatory trend line. So visually it'd be awesome if you are a bull dip buyer to get it at, let's say around 118 that would be an awesome dip buy i don't know if that's what marks after but let's zoom out on the 15 minute we have no trend change uh lower lows lower highs just one after the other okay so what is your support got an hour a 30 minute bear flag after 119.56 you have let me zoom out a little more and get you a stronger level. 119.15 and then 117.43. Resistances on the shorter time frame are 120.43 and then 121.29. Again, it looks like a 30 minute clear bear flag at the moment. Okay, Twilio. Okay, I think we covered this as well on BYOC. We were looking at that 122 range. So at BYOC, we talked about this chart and let me show you what we were looking at. If you look at this zone of support, so the way that this works is 122, it hit once, twice, third time, and it's just absorbing all the bids that are sitting there and the, excuse me, the ask is just absorbing all the inventory. And then the fourth time it weakens it because there's just not as much bid support there. And then the fifth time we projected that it would have a break and boy, did it break. Well, this was the BYOC setup of the week. Great job, Mark. I'm sure you're short this. So right now, if you are a bear, they we have a lower low and they, they attempted a higher high. Now they need a higher low in order to change the trend. And this is low bear volume on this pullback that I would just be aware of. So you have support at 111.21 and then the low of day 107, resistance 
and then all the way up at 124.81. So the bulls have a lot to work, a lot of room to work with if they want to take this higher because they took the elevator down over here. So we have no resistance that was created overhead. So they took out the order book. So just be careful if you're a bear, lock those gains in as you go. Okay. MCD for Pete. MCD. MCD is another safety stock. Why? Because it has a dividend. $1.16 August 30th. People flock to safety when SPY is in a precarious scenario. But if SPY is strong, then you don't really need your safety stocks. And then we tend to see pullbacks in dividend stocks like uh, the consumer staples, McDonald's, the utilities, REITs. Uh, you tend to see pullbacks. So that's most likely what's happening with McDonald's. It did not hold the support of 209.37. So your next support is 206.19 and then 202.61. So shorter term time frames, your support is, it's clear on the five minute, 209.98 is a double bottom area. Then 209.80, you have resistance at 210.86 and then all the way up at the high of day. RSI is extremely oversold, but look at this. That is a perfect bear flag. It need, and the decreasing bull volume is what the bears want to see for possible continuation. The problem is this RSI is so beat up. We're just getting an oversold bounce now. Uh, so this could take another leg down with the formation of that bear flag. So congrats, congrats if you took that bearish. Okay. XAGUSD. Weekly and potential bear plays. Alrighty. Okay, weekly. I'm a, I know my 007 is looking at this because that is a serious bearish reversal candle and it's looking for a confirmation this week and the week is young. This did happen on increasing bear volume. So weekly potential bear plays. So you got a four hour TCG bear cross and I am uh, using TCG bear cross loosely because in the past we've used the four and eight as the TCG bear cross. So I'll just call it an EMA bear cross of the 12 and 26 on the four hour. So I would, if I were looking for a short for this, RSI is not too oversold, uh, 1830, this four hour uh, last lower higher, excuse me, lower high. I would look to short 1830 on the four hour. So when you're looking at a weekly chart, you kind of, if you're looking for a weekly trend play, I zoom into the four hour to establish my position. So 1830 would be a potential top fishing play for a four hour lower high. Cause look at this, we have lower high, lower high, lower high. They would have to break 1830 to change, to change the trend and they need to do it on elevated bull volume, which they have a little bit of today. So 1830 would be a decent top fishing play. On the hourly, we have a trend change. So just be careful out there, bullish. And daily, the, the odds are we will set a lower high and then pull back. We need to lose that hourly trend change in order to feel a little bit more confident that our daily lower high is set. So maybe... Watch the 15 minute tr for a trend change for a loss of for a bear entry or again, top fish that 1830, which I would like just a little bit better. All right. Okay. Thank you. Lunch money. I couldn't remember what algo line you used. So uh, Mark is showing us what trend lines he used for AWK. This is such a beautiful trade. So we had the point touch here back in December, touch here back in June. And now a touch in September, the touch was a short and then we're pulling back to an area of support based on trend line, which we don't, we don't base trades on trend line alone, but uh, it gives us a nice visual and an additional edge. I love, love, love this chart. Mark does great trend line work. And this is probably one of my favorite charts he's ever done. 
So it is approaching the area of support. And what you would assume would happen if you're going to make the correlation, that it's not necessarily going to happen, but the assumption would be is that SPY would be pulling back when AWK bounces because it's a utility and it typically goes inverse SPY. It doesn't always have to. SPY has been going up and AWK bulls don't even care. They've been going up too. So, But that could be an inverse correlation trade. Nice algo lines. Thank you so much, Mark, for sharing your chart. All right, see, uh, let's see, where are we? Nat gas from a, I am also in an NG short. This is a bearish uh, engulfing candle on the four hours. So we would expect a little bit more follow through, especially on elevated bear volume. So your nat gas bear trade is safe unless they change the 15 minute trend. So to change the 15 minute trend on that gas 2598, uh, they would need to get a bull break of 2598. But it's looking like that's not a perfect bear flag. Never mind. Usually when I see a, pen, a pennant type shape here and a little equilibrium at the bottom of a downtrend, it typically resembles or rep, excuse me, represents some type of bear flag. I just don't see it clearly on the hour, so I'm not going to call that. A bear flag. So the bulls want to see a break of 2598. If you're a net gas bull, if you're a net gas bear, you want to see a breakdown of 2576 and loss of 2568. Hey, Jayco. What up? Be you. Okay. No, one you. B U T S X. All right. It's getting the beat down. Food processing. Is this a dividend stock? Is it consumer staple like uh, U.S. names? I don't see it. Okay, let me zoom back in. All right, so we've got a clear downtrend. One hour, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. Let's see. They are trying to hold this double bottom right here of $1.35. We are not oversold. You could bottom fish this $1.35 area. If it were to lose that, your next level, your next clear level, I should say, that's not really clear at $1.34, is $1.32. So you could bottom fish this. It'd be awesome, though, if the RSI were oversold to bottom fish it. And then you, I like the risk to reward here because you have a double bottom. But you're going counter trend. This is clearly in a downtrend uh, on the hourly. However, I like that it's in a daily uptrend. So Dan's rule of hourly oversold when you're in a daily uptrend, I guess the better play, let me just try to estimate this. If the RSI, to, for it to get oversold, it would really need to be closer to approaching $1.26. Hourly oversold and daily uptrend would be a nice bottom fish level. So I'm just trying to guess at, to what type of trade you're doing. Uh, so let me give you short-term resistance. It's $1.41 and $1.45. Yeah, daily's an uptrend. This, and this is decreasing bear volume here too. So take note of that on the daily. So the bears are running out of steam a little bit and you're coming up on the uh, 26 EMA is at $1.32 on the daily. This could So we've held back tests and barely got a candle close. They really didn't manage a candle close below the 26 EMA since July. So this could be a nice bottom fishing opportunity as well based on the EMA. So lots of edges present there. All right, Zahn for Stargazer. Okay, I like Zahn a lot. Zahn has changed the daily trend. So we had, we broke to a lower low, lower high, higher low, then broke to a higher high. So it needs to take out 12.51 on the hourly. I would still call this a double top, even though 1204 is a bull break of three cents of 1201. It still needs to clear that level decisively. So I would still call this a triple top area here. And your next resistance is 1209 and then 1251. It needs, let's just say 1209 is the area it needs to cover and get over in order for the bulls to get some continuation. And maybe take note of this as an extra, extra edge. Is there some bear divergence here? So we've got price making higher highs here and RSI is making, excuse me, making lower highs. So a little bit of bear divergence. 
Uh, and then as we talk about every week, the Sotima, the slope of the EMAs is 45 degrees. That is bullish. RSI turned up, bullish. Increasing bull volume, bullish. So lower wick of bulls every time, not every time, that's such a, a erroneous and awful thing for me to say, but often the bulls are buying the dip here with these lower wicks on the candle. But I would, if I were looking for a bullish, bullish position, I would like to enter closer to the 12 EMA on the hourly. That's kind of my go-to entry levels. Let me put SPY back up here. I don't know why, to see what it's doing. So SPY's resistance, 297.28 and then 297.48. All right, uh, let me, I did not zoom out on Zion. My apologies, zoom in, I should say, and give you shorter term time frames. Shorter term time frames is 1204. The bulls are fighting it right here and you have support at 1190, kind of a double bottom, 1190, 1192, double top, 1204. Clear signals on Zion at the moment and 1185 would be your next support. Okay, square. Square on the hourly could be a bull flag. You want to see a bull flag coming off an uptrend. This is barely, it bounce, it's bouncing up and it's barely coming off of a downtrend. Still has the, uh, the flag pennant type formation. So on the 15 minute, you have support at 6103 and then the low of day 5948. They would love for this high to just set right here at 61.56 and then tighten up a little bit more to get that 15 minute EQ. I say they as in traders, but if you're a bull, you want to see it run straight up to 62.10 and break it. Decreasing bear volume. Bears are running out of steam here. 15 minute uptrend. Nope, nope, not a 15 minute uptrend. We got to break 62.10. So here we go. We have a lower low. We broke to a higher high. Now we got our higher low. Now we need that higher high to say, yes, the trend is, we've got a trend and it's in our favor. So uh, some false signals here on this chart. Look at this pull back yesterday and then bounce and then run today. A lot of false signals on this. So just use your price levels and tight stops. If I miss something on square, if you're looking at it from a different perspective and you want me to Analyze longer time frames. Let me know. Stitch fix. Stitch fix right now. Double top 2057. Reg, you know I like double tops. That's why you gave it to me. So if you're looking for a short a short opportunity, uh, Stitch fix is giving it to you right here at 2057. Give it a couple pennies wiggle room. What is the next resistance? 2069 and then 2096. If it were to break that, have a bull break. Decreasing bull volume here. Bulls are running out of steam a little bit. Be interesting to see if this holds. On the 15 minute, your supports are 2005 and then the low of day 1955. Got a little bearish reversal candle forming right here at 2057. Nice short opportunity. I'm paper trading it. I'm entering right now short 2051. So we'll go back at the end of the broadcast and see how we did. All right. And then my stop would be 2060, probably three pennies, 2060. All right, I'm going to, oh, I don't want to cover that chart. <laughs> what am I going to do? Okay, I'll use this one. Now I'll go back. Okay, stitch fix, 2051. We got a lot of brains on this broadcast. Y'all can help me remember what it was. Okay, ABT. ABT, 15-minute trend change with follow-through. Bulls bought this dip at 81.11 with veracity, veracity. I don't know what word I'm trying to use. Uh, okay, we got a bear break of 81.36 by 34 cents and bulls said, step aside, I'm buying it. So the odds are we're still gonna get a 15 minute lower high relative to the high of day at 83.48 and we still need an hourly trend change. Well, we got the hour. Uh, that's just not clear enough. We need to get a new high of day. Uh, and then we still got 30 minute and hourly resistances overhead to be aware of. Man, that RSI really got beat up, didn't it? On the five minute, your supports, 81.11. Resistance high of day, 83.48. Buying the dip. On the daily, though, that was a bear break. I, 
I can't call that a double bottom when it broke by 34 cents. It's a little bit more decisive, but the bulls did buy it as if it were a double bottom. So just be aware of that if you're a bear trying to fiercely hold on to the fact that it broke bear and it should be going bearish when the bulls are saying, no, we're going to buy. Tilray. T-L-R-Y. Oh, I just saw this. I hope this is not the case. I have a Tilray position, as y'all know. Just seeing this. Something to be aware of. Normally, you're going to see it the top of uptrends. I don't know that this would be considered top of an uptrend, but either way, uh, it has the psychology there just to be aware of. Bulls are hungry. 15 minute, your resistance high of day, 31.86, and then 32.55. Your support, 31.22, and then 30.56. Just a beautiful bull today. Uh, bulls want to see this pick up. This is not good. Uh, we need the bulls to step up in volume in order for this move to get some continuation. Bulls need to prove moves with volume. We trade price action alone, but it'd be nice if they'd prove it. Aw, AQ, you're so nice. Okay, Tilray Nugget. I traded Nugget this morning. I bought this dip, exited around 32.75 because the sp spy was going up so we have to oh did we just get a new high of day on spy yes we did new high of day on spy okay your next resistance is 29772 and then i'm not going to call this uh, it didn't happen on uh, volume this 29820 i would say our next resistance is 29798 and forget this wick of 29820 it did not happen on volume so your next resistance, 297.72, 297.83, and then 297.98. When we zoom out to the hourly, what's going on? We're still, the, the probability is that we are still going to get a lower high relative to 297.98. That the odds are in favor that we would get a lower high. So, and we've got this 26 EMA overhead. So with news, though, anything is possible. But most likely scenario on SPY is some type of EQ pattern. That's most likely scenario. Okay, going back to Nugget. Nugget, beautiful EQ. So we got 33.07, 31.65, higher low, lower high, 32.73. And they're trying to get this higher low to stick at 31.92. Bull break 32.73 and a bear break would be 31.92 and then support of 31.65. Nice clear signals here on Nugget for a potential trade. Again, I wouldn't be going too bullish on Nugget if, if SPY is going bullish. All right, VGW. Clear this out. Yep, this is the right one on the hourly. Nice move by the bulls. No bear divergence. That's unusual. Normally you see this high and then this spike. Typically you get some divergence here, but there is none. Bulls, bulls, bulls. You have resistance, the high of day, 372 and then 379. On the five minute, ugh, yuck. Liquidity is not that great, so it's hard to get some clear signals. You really don't have a clear support. I mean, on the five minute, I could use 359 and then the low of day 352. Very bullish. But what happened here it's, is not happening over here. One of these things is not like the other one. We need bull volume going up. You want to see bull volume up. We do have the slope of the EMA. So, Tima, if you're in this trade bull, what do you do? You ride it because your spirit guide is telling you stay in. Price closes above EMA, spirit guide bullish. Below EMA, EMA, spirit guide bearish. Keep it simple. Looks like the bulls are pulling back a little bit here on SPY on the 15 minute. We are still looking for a higher low relative to 296 or 0.8. So we got that high. Now we expect a pullback. Will it be a flag or will it be an EQ pullback? We'll see. 
All right, oil dropping is most likely related to Bolton departure. Thank you, Reg. I'm not checking general chat, so I'm not seeing some of the news. Thank you so much for that. Okay, gush, gusher. Okay, I, as y'all know, most of you, I'm in a position I exited one third yesterday. So with oil pulling back, we would expect this to pull back as well. Big bearish can, candle, 428 is your near term support. Let's see if we can get it. 428 and then the low of day, 405. This is looking real bear flaggy on the five minute. Bulls need to get a higher low relative to 428 for any continuation but you need oil to be going in the right direction up in order for Gush to go up. Gush has had an incredible move on the 12 hour. Look at that. But this upper wick tells you bulls are tired. We need to go back to our bench. Our bench is too far below us and we need to rest. So bulls need to come back to the bench, which is our EMA, take a breather, let the bears do, do what they think they can do and then take it back on up. But right now, this is just uh, this is just some healthy consolidation, nothing more. Yes, that was a big bear candle on news, but overall, look at all the room the bulls have to work with to form a higher low. Tons of room. So at least come back to the hourly EMA to take a rest. So on these scenarios, you depending on the size of your account and how much gush you have. I'm okay swinging a gush position for a four to six week swing and then enter drip for a quick flip when it gets this extended. So just, you may want to look at putting that into your playbook and also XOP. You could do XOP puts while you swing gush, gush, gush. And uh, just for a short term bear play doesn't mean it changes your long term view. All right, APHA. I hear the bulls are pretty happy on APHA from what I've seen. Got some topping candles here. Look at these upper wicks, topping candles. Bearish engulfing on the daily. Hmm. One hour, good things, doing good things on decreasing bull volume. 15 minute, we need a lower high. So we would expect plenty of room to get a, uh, excuse me, a higher low and then possible continuation. Bull volume needs to continue and to press on. On the hourly, they need to break 708 and then 724. Let me look at that chart a little quick. 714 was the high of yesterday. My apologies. 714 and then 724. We need that, we need that higher low and then higher high here on the hourly to change the trend. When you look at the hourly, you see the decreasing bull volume. It just jumps out at you, but on the five minute, it's not as much. So as long as you're in a bull trade, you stay bullish. As long as it's above these EMAs, slope of the EMAs is pointing up. That means price will is going up with it until the, the slope changes. You can stay bullish. 687 and 685 is your support on A, PHA. Okay, what's next? Netflix been sneezing all day. I hope I don't start sneezing in y'all's ear. Put Spy back up here. Netflix. Those bulls, they can't get it together. My goodness. This is one choppy chart. When you see this stuff and you stuff as in wicks, 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 bull breaks, bear breaks, bull breaks, pull back, very hard to trade as a new trader. So just remember that, that you want some clean trades. And so you need charts that are giving clear signals. This is an example of not giving clear signals. So Netflix, if you're in short, congratulations. Uh, top fishing play would be to grab a lower high relative to the high of day, 297.17. Your resistance is 295.46 and you have no support until uh 290 psychological and then 288.90 the low of day. Bear volume is decreasing though. Excuse me. I'm trying not to sneeze. I'm trying to ward it off. Okay, Amazon. The Fang, let's just let's just call it what it is. The Fang names are just not getting any love. I mean, it's moving to XLF and to XLE. There's just some rotation going on and rotation means they're selling their positions, okay? But then Amazon says, not me. 
they still love me. Okay, we got a five minute bull flag trying to form on Amazon with that new high of day, 1825.81. Maybe it's Netflix they're just throwing away. Okay, 1825.81 is your high of day. Then your next resistance, 1832 and 1833.88. Your support, 1815.55 and then 1810.80. Bull's looking good on Amazon. What's going on with the hourly though? We're still expecting a higher low and a four hour lower high. We're squeezed in between these EMAs on the four hour. And we got hourly EMA resistance overhead. This could be a short. Yeah, this is decreasing bull volume on the hourly as well. I would not be looking for bull entries up here when we're just expecting an hourly lower high. Okay, Hexo. Wow. Okay, hourly, we still are going from a lower low and we're still just expecting a lower high. Let's just call it in this area. We, we expect a lower high and a pullback, but the bulls have bounced pretty well that we would expect a higher low on this bounce. So here, wherever they top out, come back, get a higher low, and then maybe EQ or bull flag out. But we need a trend change on the hourly in order to get uber bullish. Right now, very nice move. Don't like these upper wicks. We want to see lower wicks of dip buying, but not those upper wicks. Lots of profit taking. You know what that tells me? Just looking at the chart, what just went through my head is they're scared. Someone bought the dip for a day trade and then they're selling it as it pops because we have no trend change. There is no reason to hold bullish, decreasing bull volume to be aware of. On the five minute, you have support at 445 and 440. And you have resistance at 454, the high of day. And then your next resistance is at 457. As long as you're above these EMAs, spirit guide, you're bullish. I would stay in the trade, but I would definitely exit if 445 was lost. Or say 444. I shouldn't say definitely. I, If it were me, I would exit. Take two for dove. Whoa. And what just went through my head then is mama said, knock you out. They're like, no, we don't like you today. Wow. Up, down, up, down. Not giving clear signals either. They're selling the pops. They're just shorting it. It'd be interesting to see what the uh, short float on take two is because you could just see the psychology pop, short it, pop, short it. So right now it's... Uh, 129.91. The sub low support is the low of day 129.27. And then after 129.27, your next support is 128.64. Lower highs and now lower lows. Bearish chart and very wicky. So on the five minute, your first resistance, if you were trying to go long, which I'd have, I wouldn't, would be 130.25 or 131.14. This is just not a counter trend trade I'd like to take because we have support so far away. Interesting chart. I'd I, it probably has news related because it just seems so choppy. Oh, stamp. This looks like a bull flag. Excuse me, a cup and handle. Not ideal, but pretty close. It is at the high of day. Hope it doesn't double top right here. So be careful. 7431 would still be considered a double top. Uh, you have support at 7348 and 7283. After the high of day, 7431. Wow, look at these bulls. They just been making having their way with it because it fell out of bed so fast, so hard. So you have no resistance until 8674 before it got slaughtered. Interesting chart. I haven't looked at stamps in a while. Hmm. If you were looking for a short, you could short right here and then have a stop of like three or four pennies because you're definitely going counter trend because this is a major short squeeze. Stitch fix. Is that trade working? Yay, it worked, y'all. So now we have to be careful that this isn't a cup and handle. On the 15th minute, we have to be careful, but the short did work. All right, uh, FYI, yeah, Roku.
Roku 15 minute EQ. Resistance 155.66, which isn't crystal clear. That's a technical judgment call. And then 157.85, you have support at 152.60 and 151.30. Nice EQ to look at, getting zapped by the 15 minute EMA at the moment. So if you are bottom fishing this EQ, you could bottom fish this 152.60 and, and then use that as your stop to try to bottom. When I say bottom fish EQ, I'm saying this tightening pattern and then you're hoping for a bull break if you're bottom fish. If you top fish it, you're, you're looking for a bear break. Hope isn't a strategy, you're using price levels, but y'all know what I mean. Okay, A-C-R-G. Okay, dot U. So that one. Okay, gotcha. Ooh. Okay, this gets me excited. Look at that cup and handle. Bam, bam. And I say excited, and what you want is a perfect double top for your cup and handle. It is just beautiful. That's pretty. That's really pretty. It really needs to break this 899 level. Now trying to find your next resistance. We're still looking for a higher low to, to break the trend, to have a trend change on ACRG. On the 15 minute, 934 and 940 would be the next resistance. Wow, that's just so pretty. That's the stuff technical dreams are made of. Nat gas is bouncing. Okay, after ACRG. C Web for my friend JR. And he doesn't want the Chinese internet one. He wants Charlotte's Web. No love for C for C Web, huh? Okay, alrighty. 15 minute trend change. We got uh, 2094, then we got our lower high at 2142, higher low $21, and then we got a bull break at 2150. And now the bulls are wrestling with the 26 EMA on the 15 minute. Next resistance is 2164, high of day, and then $22. And your support 2113 and $21. Hmm, something jumping out at me here. Let me just draw it. Oh, it had a bull break from that line. Alrighty, that looked kind of wedgy, but it's getting a bull break from it, so who cares? I hope you're in this bullish, and what we want to see, JR, is we want to see increasing bull volume. So this candle closes in five minutes, and they, they need a little bit, they need more volume to prove themselves. That's the prove it indicator. Alright, that's all the tickers in the request line. I feel like Delilah. In the request line, okay, Tilray's pulling back a little bit more than the bulls would like to see. All right, spy, let me get my line out of here. Five minute could be a bull flag here. Again, I'm still expecting a lower high relative to on the hourly to 297.98 right here. And it's really hard if you're new to trading, it's hard to find, figure out which wicks are real and which ones aren't. And they usually happen on volume. So I'm just disregarding this 298.20 and I'm going with a 297.98 as our last hourly lower high. So I'm still expecting another lower high relative to 297.98. And then the pullback, the bulls will determine if it's going to be a flag or it's going to be an equilibrium. All right, what, what we got? Oh, someone asked for work. Did I see that? And I, I looked over it. I didn't mean to. Did someone ask for work and then they deleted it? Aw, thanks, Reg. You guys work if you have time. Okay. No problem. I'm looking where to take profit on you guys. You gas on the hourly, excuse me, Nat gas on the hourly is going to form. Let me switch to the Nat spot price one moment. Please hold. So on the hourly, we're still expecting a lower high relative to 2645. So uh, be careful on that. Right now, you're double topping at this 2598 to 2596. So you could just walk your stop up. 
and right now your stop would be at the 2582 area up 25 percent at the moment so i'm assuming jr you've been in for a while so i like to take partial profit when it's so extended like it has been i like to take profit i took profit on you guys yesterday and then add back that scale on healthy consolidation. So if you're in you guys and you like your profit, I would exit at least a third. Uh, that would be the prudent thing to do on any of these pops. And then you can add that third back on healthy consolidation. But just know that the, I mean, it's still really bullish. So if you do sell, don't get frustrated with yourself if it keeps going or frustrated with me. So I just want to show you this kind of parabolic this parabolic trend that nat gas is on i mean the bulls are on fire so rsi is disregarded but just through our typical technical analysis you would expect some type of healthy consolidation so congratulations jr work 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 okay let me look at work wow black dirt breakdown okay hourly trend change we had our lower low at 2393 Lower high at 25.43, higher low at 24.50, and now we got a bull break. So on the 15 minute, you've got a, a support that needs to hold a 25.67, and you've got a double top at 26.31 and 26.32. If you were to break that double top, your resistance would be 27.60. I see a slight bear divergence here on RSI to be aware of. I see decreasing... Uh, bull volume to be aware of so bulls may exhaust themselves with this rsi extended but if you're a bull you're pretty comfortable i would just use the five minute emas as my guide so as long as it's staying above the emas i'd stay in bullish okay weed okay i lost my thread one moment Okay, so uh, weed, inverse head and shoulder on the 15 minute. Hmm, wishful thinking. <laughs> I think I see what you see, and I think this is what you're talking about. Maybe that, 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 but that's that's us stretching the pattern to make it fit our desires. So uh, I don't see it clearly. So here I see a little bit of a bull flag. If you want me to give you some bull hope, I see a little bull flag here. I'm just trying to analyze some things. I'm looking at that algo trend line right there. Algo, again, when I say that, I mean we had two points. And then the third point is an anticipatory line where price would react, in which it did. I'm looking for any type of pattern. So what we tend to do as technical analysts is we look for patterns to confirm our bias. So just be aware of that. And I know that Ann is aware of it. We've got some elevated bear volume on this five minute and just to be aware of as well. On the 15 minute, we're in an uptrend. So it, it, I mean, point to the bulls for now. Oh, awesome. I'm so happy, JR. Okay, fit in, of course. I, for simply surviving, aren't we all just simply surviving? I'm with you, dude, or, or chick, whoever you are, I'm with you. We're all just surviving. I already, whoa, what a bull. Okay, 25.45 has to break to change the trend. On, I mean, this is a super uber awesome bull move. Need to break 25.45. Okay, hourly. Yeah, because we've had some fake outs. In order to change the trend, they need to break 25.45. 15 minute, your support's 24.72 and 23.93. If you're looking for a bear entry, you could top fish 25.45. If you're a bull and you're in, I would stay in as long as this EMA holds. Y'all, we can keep this trading so simple. Find a level to short or find a level to go long. And get you a TCG bull or bear cross to back that trade up. And bam. And look at this TCG bull cross and then boom. Up. So what I just said, how would we apply that in this scenario? When 2393 held, it held the low of yesterday. 
And we know breaking the high of the day before or not breaking the low of the day before that or breaking the low is bearish. But so we dipped and 23.93 was a great long opportunity to bottom fish this 23.78. Then you got a TCG bull cross. Then the fireworks go off and you get the butterflies in your stomach. And then the Sotima is straight up, very bullish. I hope you are one of the persons who took long, uh, hopefully, because this is a great trade. So nice with IRDM, XPO. Ah, uh, you're Steven. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Well, you didn't see me on YouTube or you had been like, woman, you need to put some makeup on or something. But. I appreciate the kind thoughts or words. Okay, hourly. XO. Did I get the right one? XPO. Yep, I got the right one. Okay. Four. It's looking a little wedgy on the hourly. I'm just kind of zooming out and see what we got going on here. Okay, after 75.53, your next resistance is 7927. Okay, on the 15 minute, oh, this is so wicky. Ugh. Up, down, up, down. So we've got, we got a lower low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. We're in a clear uptrend with a 26 EMA as our spirit guide on the 15 minute, okay? So on the five minute, we have our support 74.65 and 74.20. And then again, you got a double top on the high of day, 75.53, 75.52. And then I, I, the next resistance is up at the 79 level. Real wiki chart. So I hope you know the character of the chart. So uh, you know how to trade this. And by, by that, I mean, some people trade a ticker so often that when it behaves oddly, they know how to trade it because they know, like, for example, BKNG. I know it likes to spike in the morning and then fade, melt up at the end of the day. That's the character or the nature of that ticker. AMD likes to spike up and then give back its gains. Doesn't mean it does it all the time, but I kind of have a vibe and a feel for it. Kind of like Anne has a feel for weed. Like she knows it. She trades it inside and out. Hopefully if you're trading a name like this, that you know how, how it behaves and this stuff doesn't like freak you out. Because when I see it, I'm like, and I'm out. All these wicks. I'm out. That's too many fake outs to the upside and downside. And I don't like trading names like that, but that's just my perspective. I've given enough money to the stock market gods that I don't want to donate any more money. I ain't about that game. So I just want to have gains. See why I'm making a nice move for JR. Spy 297.98. Okay. Oil is bouncing. We're still expecting a lower high relative to 58.73. All right, XBI. You're welcome, Ian. Just looking at five minute algo set to buy around noon, maybe sooner. Okay. And I also, I made a post this weekend in Futures Room and it was kind of, maybe it was a little too vague and people didn't understand what I was trying to say. But, you know, again, we use our biases on patterns, RSI, blah, blah to confirm what we think is happening. I, we don't need any of the biases just get in the way of our trading. We need price level. So now Phil is asking about XBI. I have no idea about clocks, algos, who's going to buy, when, what, what I see is a short opportunity at 81.52. Why? If I'm looking to trade XBI, I'm not getting in long here. You couldn't make me buy Labu right now. I would buy LABD as it approaches 81.52, but I wouldn't go long. So that's what I mean about biases with the clocks and algos. I trade with a lot of people who will say, oh, well, one o'clock, that's when the, the algo buying goes off or whatever. So on XBI, there's no way with this RSI over 70, I'd be a buyer here. I would just short as it approaches 81.52. Your next resistance, 82.44. If you're in bull, you're comfortable. You're so comfortable. And you have support at 80.26 and 79.75. Bull volume is dwindling over here. Just something to be aware of. All right. I am going to, this is last call for one more ticker. And then we will wrap it up so I can go cover my oil short because it's bouncing on me right now. All right. Part of my oil short. 
<laughs> I'm not certain of anything. I am not certain of anything. It's so funny. I, uh, maybe it's the cynic in me. I don't know. But when people say stuff is easy or this is going to happen at that time and I just trade what the chart gives me. Just just give me some price level to short or price level to long, and then we end this. Okay, let's check on Stitch Fix before we go. If I could spell. Our short is working. If you if you actually took this short, your support now is 2036 that you want to be aware of, uh, and then that resistance to 2057, because this could indeed be a cup and handle to be aware of. So just be cautious. But that short worked out for about 10 cents. Oh. Okay, uh, okay, let's do last ticker jaw, X-A-U-U-S-D gold. Why is gold coming down? Because this spy bull's on fire. Uh, so your next support is 1488.877. That could be a bottom fish level right here. If so, here's what I'm thinking. Uh, who's asking about this? Kula. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm watching this 297.98. If SPY gets toppy here on decreasing bull volume, which is happening, it gets a little toppy, then a gold bottom fish makes sense because you have decreasing bear volume here. We got decreasing bear volume here, and it's approaching a support. I can go long at that level. Doesn't mean I'm going to stay in it. I could get stopped out. And on short longs like this, I would then change my... Uh, support or stop loss at 1487 it's only a dollar behind it but it gives me another level to go along against so if spies getting a little toppy here gold approaching support it could be a good long for a short-term flip all right oh thanks phil yeah i know i know you know i'm kidding too uh pete what am i watching today uh i am watching oil i and uh, 007 is watching oil as well i'm short oil and i like this this oil short. I am long term bullish on oil, but uh, man, they're really recovering, huh? <laughs> on the 15 minute, we're still expecting a lower high relative to 58.73. And then the way they're bouncing, they'd probably get a higher low here. They're probably going to get a higher low and we're going to EQ out. That's what I expect in US oil. Oh, no problem. Simply surviving. You're welcome. I enjoy what I do. So I'm watching Tilray. I'm in a Tilray position. CGC's got me happy right now. I'm watching those two. Uh, I'm short nat gas. I'm short oil. Uh, so I'm my eyes are pretty focused on the futures. And then I let's see if there's any other trades I'm watching. Way to go, CGC Bulls. I just don't want to touch the fang names. I'm just looking at my normal tickers. Uh, CRK, I did do a dip buy of CRK today, this 823 double bottom. I added back a scale that I sold yesterday. Yes, this is a bearish chart at the moment, but overall it needs some consolidation. But look at this bull volume. Jerry Jones took a $7.5 billion stake in this company. So I love this bull volume and it's a nat gas trade. So I, uh, add, I added to my swing today on this one because I like to add on consolidation. So Right now, the best trades I see are a long on gold and maybe a short on SPY in the short term. And that's starting to work out. Y'all are awesome. Thank y'all so much for joining me. And as always, I will be around in the room to help anyone that may need it. See y'all in the room.